This is Sean Forsyth, Technical Manager for Feedwater Limited, and we're going to do a demonstration of the field test method for chloride analysis. Uh, so it's a titration, we need two reagents. First one is the chloride indicator, and the second one is chloride titrant. Worth checking with this one, make sure that re your reagents are in date, because these do, well, this reagent in particular, the titrant, does not have a very long shelf life. Uh, so if it's been in your test kit for a while, you'll need to check and make sure that it is within date. So you can take various sample sizes for this and it will determine the number of ppm per drop. So we're going to take a 20 mil sample. So each drop of titrant with a 20 mL sample will give you 10 ppm of chloride. So we'll add 10 drops of indicator. One, two. Now before you get to this point, if you know that the sample is likely to be alkaline or acidic, you'll need to buffer the sample to between pH uh, 5 and 9.5. And you can do this with either calcium hardness buffer to increase the pH to above 5, or you can use acetic acid neutralizing reagent to reduce the pH down from above 9.5. And the end point that we're looking for is the first sort of orange-red precipitate that we see. So at the moment, it's a clear yellow color. When we start titrating with the chloride titrant, we'll... we'll we might see a change in colour, but it's the first sort of red, orange, um, cloudy precipitate that we see. One, two. Three. So there's your end point. Three drops, 10 ppm each, that's 30 ppm. So with that being a relatively low number of drops, you'll probably want to rerun that test at a higher resolution. So increase the sample volume maybe to, to 40 mil, so it's a 5 ppm per drop, um, and redo.